This upcoming winter season is going to be really interesting because right now, all around the globe, there are major weather pattern changes going on. And of course, we've talked about this before. All of these weather pattern changes are going to ultimately affect our weather here in the United States. Arctic blasts, blizzards, and even severe weather are all going to be on the table once again. But the interesting part this year is exactly where those things are going to happen. You see, in this video, we're not looking at a simple forecast. This is the story of a battle, a massive tug of war between competing forces in our atmosphere. On one side, we've got a weak and faltering La Nina trying to take control down in the Pacific Ocean. And on the other side, there's a wild card sitting 60,000 feet above the North Pole, the polar vortex. And it's showing some signs of instability that could unleash some serious Arctic cold. The result? We're looking at a winter on a knife's edge. A winter that's going to create two very different Americas. Some of you are going to be dealing with relentless snow and bone-chilling cold. Others, we're going to be talking about a warm and dry winter, maybe even with some drought conditions. In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly where that cold and snow is going to hit the hardest, so let's get right into it. Let's start off with the main player in our winter forecast, and that's what's happening right now in the Pacific Ocean. You've probably heard about El Nino and La Nina by now, but what we're dealing with this year is something different. It's weak, almost ghostly. NOAA issued a La Nina watch back on August 14th, which sounds official and scary, but here's the thing. Latest models only give it a 42% chance of actually developing. That means there's a 52% chance we stay neutral all winter. And not only that, but six out of the eight international models are actually calling for neutral conditions. So we're really on the fence here. Now let me explain what this means for our weather. Think of a classic strong La Nina like dropping a giant boulder in to a river. That boulder forces all the water, and in our case we're talking about the jet stream and storm track, to flow around it in a very predictable way. It pushes everything north, giving us cold and snowy winters up in the north and warm, dry conditions down south. It's reliable, it's consistent, and it's powerful. But this year, with ocean temperatures sitting just 0.3 degrees Celsius below average, that's barely crossing the threshold to even call it a La Nina. Our boulder is more like a pebble in this scenario. Maybe a marble at best. The pattern is there, you can see it trying to form, but it's fragile and it's easily disrupted. One good atmospheric wave could wash it away entirely. And that's why this winter is going to be so volatile. We don't have a strong driver keeping things locked in place. Now here's where things get really interesting. Despite all that uncertainty I just talked about, the weak La Nina, the fence sitting models, when we look at just the long range supercomputers, something remarkable happens. The American model, the European model, the Canadian model, they're all showing the same thing. And and when all of these models agree like this, we have to pay attention. What they're showing is a winter of two halves, a great divide that's gonna split our country right across the middle. And I mean that literally, draw a line across the middle of the United States. And for everyone in the Southern tier, we're talking about California all the way down into the Carolinas. These models are showing a warmer and drier winter. This is something that you're used to. The models are showing temperature departures of two to four degrees above normal and precipitation that could be 20 to 40% below average. If you're in the Southwest, this means that drought conditions are probably going to get worse. And if you're in the southeast, well, at least your heating bills may be a little bit lower. But for the northern tier, you better get ready. This is where things are actually going to be somewhat interesting this year. The models are pointing to a colder and wetter season. We're talking about enhanced storm tracks, more frequent Arctic intrusions, and yes, more snow. And here's the key part. Where these two different air masses collide, where that cold northern air meets the warm southern air, that's our battleground. That's where we're going to see our biggest storms, our heaviest snowfalls, and potentially some serious severe weather too. This transition area is essentially going to be ground zero for weather drama this winter. But once again, we're doing some long range forecasting here, so nothing's set in stone. I, I, I gotta mention again, everything I just told you could be completely overridden by one major player. There's another player that's involved here that we haven't talked about yet. And to understand this wild card truly, we need to look way up into the stratosphere, about 60,000 feet above the North Pole. That's where the polar vortex lives. Now, I know everybody loves to talk about the polar vortex like it's some sort of scary monster. You've probably heard the news screaming about it and trying to scare you. But let me tell you what the polar vortex actually is. Think of it as a massive spinning top made of frigid Arctic air. When that top is spinning fast and stable, all that cold air stays locked up in the North Pole, where it belongs. And we stay perfectly mild down here in the mid-latitude 
Life is good. But here's the crucial detail that we're concerned about this winter. When you combine La Nina conditions with the current atmospheric setup, we get a 60 to 75% chance of a major polar vortex disruption. We call this a sudden stratospheric warming event, which that name is kind of ironic because it leads to major cold down here. When one of these disruptions happens, it's like someone just opened the freezer door for the entire country. That spinning top wobbles, slows down, and sometimes even splits in two. And when it does, all that Arctic air that was locked up around the North Pole comes spilling down into North America. We're talking about temperature drops of 15 to 25 degrees below normal, wind chills that can hit minus 30, minus 40, and even minus 50 in some areas. And these aren't just little baby quick hits either. These things can last four to eight weeks completely overriding whatever pattern we thought we were in. And based on the current setup, and once again, this is long range forecasting, it's mostly for fun. We'll know more as we get closer to these events happening, but I'm expecting two to three major disruption events this winter, with the highest risk period being from January through early March. And when they hit, these are gonna be the stories we all remember from this winter for years to come. Okay, so now that we've went over the overview, let's get specific about what you can expect in your backyard this winter. Starting with the Pacific Northwest and we're talking about Seattle and Portland and you guys are in for a wild ride this winter. You're sitting directly in the path of the enhanced storm track and you're actually the only region in the entire country where the models are very confident in consistent cooler than normal temperatures, not just dependent on the polar vortex. We're looking at a 33 to 40 percent probability of below normal temps. But something that we always have to think about up here is atmospheric rivers and with that enhanced storm track that does look like something that we're going to experience on a pretty regular basis up here this winter. In the Cascades, I think we're going to look at 20 to 40 percent above normal snowpack. If you're a skier, this is your year. And if you're worried about water supply for summer, you can breathe a little bit easier. Now let's move over to the Northern Plains and into the Great Lakes region. We're talking about Minneapolis, Chicago, Detroit, and Buffalo. You guys are going to be in the front lines of the Arctic invasions this year. When that polar vortex wobbles, you are going to feel it. And let's talk about lake effect snow because this pattern is absolutely primed for that. We're looking at air, water, temperature differences of 15 to 20 degrees Celsius during major events. And for those of you who might not know what that means, it's just essentially the perfect ingredient for those intense snow bands that can dump up to three feet of snow in a very short period of time. If you're near the southern shores of Lake Superior or Michigan, I'm expecting 20 to 40 percent above normal snowfall rates down here. And it's not just lake effect snow. We're also going to be looking at the return of the Alberta Clipper this year. This is something that we haven't had to deal with a lot in, in recent years. These fast moving little storms that zip down from Canada, they're going to be much more frequent this year. Each one might only drop three to six inches of snow, but they're going to happen very often. Now let's go down to the Southwest. And I wish I had better news for you, but this is going to be a tough winter. Phoenix, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, the models are all showing a 33 to 50% probability of above normal temperatures with a persistent ridge of high pressure parking itself over your region. We're talking about 40% below normal precipitation, and you're already in drought conditions down here. So expect it to get much worse. And in Southern California, we've got to be especially vigilant for fire weather, which I think will be a big problem. Now let's scoot back up into the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. We're talking about St. Louis, Indianapolis, Cincinnati, Columbus. Welcome to the storm track battleground. You're going to be right there where the cold air from the Arctic is going to be colliding with that warm, moist air from the Gulf. And as always, when those two air masses meet, things get really interesting. Now looking at the long range data, here's what stands out to me most ice storms. The freezing rain potential is running 35 to 40 percent above normal this year, especially for northern Texas into Oklahoma, maybe over into Missouri. The large scale synoptic pattern that we're going to be in just kind of screams ice storm potential for this region, so get ready for that. But it's not just ice. With the subtropical jet setting up shop around 30 to 35 degrees north latitude, you're also looking at an enhanced severe weather risk. Yes, I said severe weather in winter. We could see winter supercell thunderstorms with rotation producing tornadoes in December and January. We've seen this a lot in recent years. This will be another year where that's going to be a big risk for us. And the temperature swings? Well, get ready for more weather whiplash. You might be wearing shorts one day and then experiencing a blizzard the next. It should be an interesting winter in the Ohio Valley. Now, let's go over to the Northeast. From Philly up through Boston and into Maine, you're looking at an exceptionally active winter. And I mean exceptionally. From everything that I can tell from these long-range models, and remember, this stuff is going to change. But 
I think it's definitely safe to say that we're going to have six to nine significant nor'easters this year. It's a bold prediction, I know, especially with the drought of nor'easter activity that we've been having. Things are looking more favorable for that kind of pattern this year. And here's what's driving this. The North Atlantic Oscillation is expected to start positive in early winter, keeping things relatively mild. But by February and March, it's likely flipping negative. And that's when crap's going to hit the fan. A negative NAO means blocking patterns near Greenland that cause storms to slow down, intensify, and hammer the coast. And peak storm activity looks to be around February through March, so don't get fooled by the mild and seemingly inactive start to winter. It's going to end with a bang. Now let's go into the southeastern United States. We're talking about Atlanta, Charlotte, down through Florida. You guys are going to get the warm end of this pattern. Temperatures are going to run two to four degrees above normal and precipitation rates are going to be 20 to 30 percent below normal. Pretty much this is the area that is going to be most boring this winter. There's nothing exceptional about this. This is actually a pattern that we've seen before and we're quite used to down here. The one thing that we've really got to watch out for is severe weather. If we do get these big high amplitude troughs and ridges moving through, we're going to see a a couple of big storm systems that could lead to tornado outbreaks and stuff like that in the southeast so we'll have to watch out for that but for the most part things are looking relatively calm in the southeast this winter and if we do get those big polar vortex events there's going to be one or two times throughout the winter where it's going to get noticeably colder maybe even a few records might be broken in the northern extent of this area but once again i don't see a very memorable winter in the southeast now you might be thinking how are you so confident in these forecasts ryan well, I'm not. This is long range forecasting. A lot of it is, you know, subject to change, but this is our best guess right now. And one of the things that allows us to have a best guess is history. We've seen all of this happen before. In fact, the winter of 2010 to 2011 is our best match. There's an 85% pattern matching similarity to what we're expecting to see in the 2025 2026 winter season. That winter brought absolute chaos to the Northeast with record snowfall. Some areas got 140% of their normal annual snowfall. Some other analogs that I'm seeing are 2007, 2008, 1998, and 1999. And here's the kicker. Every single one of those analog years produced memorable Arctic outbreaks. The kind where they cancel school for a week, where cars won't start, and where they're still talking about it 20 years later. And it's not a slam dunk forecast, but that's the pattern that we're heading into for the 2025-2026 winter season. All right, so enough yapping. The bottom line here is that uh, we are expecting an exciting, interesting and potentially dangerous winter that's going to keep us all on our toes. And whether we're tracking blizzards, arctic outbreaks, or severe thunderstorms this winter, we all need to stay ahead of those storms. And in this day and age, there's no reason not to have state-of-the-art equipment and uh, applications to help you do that. And that brings me to today's amazing sponsor, WeatherWise, the best weather radar app. This is a free to download, state of the art, ad free radar app available on iOS and Android, or you can literally open it up in a web browser. And now there's even more to this revolutionary weather viewing tool. A few months ago, I told you about WeatherWise Plus, where you could pay a small fee and unlock all kinds of cool features like y'all mode, which makes your weather radar look like mine, the one that I use on the live streams, or the 3D globe projection, radar smoothing, and the enhanced lightning visualizations, and much more. Well, now there's a step even above that. Introducing WeatherWise Pro, the standard for visual weather data interaction in 2025. With WeatherWise Pro, you're going to get professional level radar tools like real-time 3D cross-section views so you can see inside the storm, triple view on mobile and quad view on tablets and desktop, Reflectivity X, which gives you two times the amount of radar scans for the same time period, and max reflectivity, which shows you the composite max reflectivity across 5 to 30 scans. No other radar app out there is doing this stuff. My favorite new pro feature is the flash reflectivity tool, which allows you to set a reflectivity range you want to flash so you can immediately highlight areas of concern completely custom to your preferences. And of course, the new weather alerts impact reports, which allow you to see the population, the amount of homes, scheduled events, and sensitive infrastructure
structure inside warning polygons at a glance. And of course, fast scan, which gives you ultra low latency radar scans and this very awesome, fully customizable radar sweep animation. Now, once again, one of the big things about WeatherWise and the reason why I like working with them so much is because it's free. If you want all of the same data that the National Weather Service uses to issue severe thunderstorm warnings and stuff like that, you don't have to pay a dime. But if you want these professional level monitoring tools, there's no better option out there. Upgrade to WeatherWise Pro today. There's a way to do it inside of your app. And if you don't have the app yet, scan this QR code or go to weatherwise.app in your browser. And once again, it's free, but I definitely recommend the Plus and the Pro versions. Super huge shout out to WeatherWise. Couldn't ask for a better weather app to be working with. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, slap a like on there. Subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.